What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about layout guides, a concept of auto layout and constraints that a lot of people aren't very comfortable with or even aware about. So that said, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe, you guys know the spiel. We're going to open up Xcode, create a new project, and get into things. So we're going to stick with the app template under iOS. Let me go ahead and be creative and call this layout guides. We're going to stick with storyboards and so we're working with UI kits and constraints and of course Swift as your language. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop. And first things first, let me go ahead and just give this guy a run in a 12 pro simulator i'll also go ahead and expand my xcode window and we'll talk about layout guides now this is something that i came across recently in a discussion with a friend where you know layout guides came up when he was talking to somebody and he wasn't very familiar with it and i thought to myself huh well i don't really use layout guides myself that much chances are a lot of people probably aren't aware of them or comfortable with them so let's let's talk about what it is. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to set a background color onto this uh, view controller's view. And I'm going to go ahead and create another view right in this file for sake of simplicity. It's going to be called my view, super creative. And we're just going to add a constructor here. Let's go ahead and fix this guy. We don't want an equal here. We need the constructor here. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this frame or this view a background color as well. Maybe we'll go ahead and give it a system red. All right, now that we've got this other view, this auxiliary view, we can go ahead and create an instance of it like so. And we're gonna add it as a sub view to our view controller here by saying add sub view and we're gonna want to lay it out. Now, instead of laying it out with view did layout sub views, we're gonna lay it out with constraints. Let me just go ahead and give this a run, make sure everything's looking good. Let me fix all my typos here. Let's see my view. This is yelling at me because we need the required constructor as well. Let's go ahead and give it a run. We've got our blue screen. Now we're gonna add a label or another view into my view and we're also going to use layout guides to demonstrate the benefit of them what they are and how to use them but before we do that we want this red view to actually show up so we're going to first come in here and add some constraints so we're going to say my view translates uh, into auto resizing masks uh, into constraints we're going to go ahead and make that false and we're going to go ahead and say ns layout constraint activate and we want to set four constraints on my view so the first one we're going to do is the leading anchor constraint is going to be equal to this dot leading anchor and we're just going to copy and paste this a total of four times and we're going to update these to be trailing anchor top anchor bottom anchor and respectively here we're going to do trailing top and bottom go ahead and give it a run and this is where we start actually noticing uh, layout guides if you take a look at the screen on the right the first thing you'll notice is we don't see the blue anymore the red my view actually encapsulates the whole screen and the reason for that makes sense right we said pin this at the top left right and bottom what about the safe area though? Safe area is a concept that a lot of folks are familiar with and that basically is a way where the layout accounts for the safe area where you can put your content such that it doesn't uh, overlap with the notch or even this little uh, home indicator bar down here. And what we can do to achieve that is constrain it to the safe area layout guide. So now this view has a safe area inset on it, but it also has a safe area layout guide and its type is a UI layout guide. So you might be wondering, well, what the heck is the difference? The layout guide is very similar to the inset, but it is an actual uh, element that auto layout can use more dynamically. So before we get into the nitty gritty, let's just go ahead and update it. So this is gonna be the top anchor. And here we're just gonna insert this layout guide and give it a run once more. And now we're gonna notice the red view uh, doesn't overlap the notch or the bottom home indicator, uh, whether it is in portrait or landscape. Now in landscape, there's no thing at the top, so it's flush and at the bottom, we still have that home bar. So that makes sense. So what is actually going on here? What's going on here is uh, UI layout guides are, uh, in other words, flexible white space that auto layout can use to figure out where to position stuff. 
So the theory here, and there's a little bit of background on this, is back in the day, before we had layout guides, a lot of ways to lay out UI involved adding a clear dummy view such that it'll push your view down or up. Now what that would mean, let's say like six or seven years ago, is we would have three views here. One view would be at the top here, which would be the height of your status bar, and it would have a you know clear background color. We would have a red view, and then at the bottom here, we would have another view, which would be, again, a clear background color, and we would use that to kind of push this red view up and down respectively. But UI layout guides do that for you. They fill that need for you without taking on the extra work of having to create these dummy views and the performance ramifications that auto layout then has to lay out those views. So let's actually create our own layout guide and see its power. So I'm gonna create um, another view inside our my view instance up here. So we're gonna say another view is simply a UI view. We're gonna do a couple things in here. First, we're gonna clip this to bounce and say true. The next thing we're gonna do is say another view we're gonna assign it translate to auto resizing masks into constraints to false. Of course, we want to add this as a sub view like so, looking good. And let's set a background color to this guy as well so we can see it. Uh, let's go with a system yellow. Now we also wanna lay this guy out. So to start off with, I'm just gonna be a little lazy and copy and paste this constraint block down here and we're gonna tweak this. So we want to go ahead and constrain my view, or rather another view. We're going to make its leading, trailing, top, and bottom anchor equal to the leading anchor of this view, the trailing anchor, its top anchor, and its bottom anchor. And what we expect to see now is we're not going to see any of the red. We're simply going to see the yellow because it's taken up the entire uh, you know, position and space of that parent view. Let's now say we wanted some space at the top here, but we want it to be, instead of a, you know just a constraint and adding a constant to the top anchor, we want it to be dynamic, or we want to use a layout guide. So the way we do that is really trivial, actually. We first, we want to create the guide. So we're going to say the guide is UI layout guide, just like that. And let's say we're going to want some space at the bottom as well. We're going to create another layout guide. We'll call this guide two. Let's actually be a little better with our naming. Let's do guide, uh, bottom guide and top guide. And we wanna simply add constraints to this guy. So let me go ahead and we're just gonna add them in here. But before we do that, don't forget to do add layout guide. You can call this on any view, just like add sub view and add your layout guide. We're also gonna do the bottom guide, just like that. And let's go ahead and add some constraints to these guys. We're gonna go and say the top guide, if I can spell it correctly, dot leading anchor is going to basically be the same leading anchor of its parent. We're gonna go ahead and give it a trailing and a top anchor. So we're gonna say top anchor. We're gonna do the trailing anchor. This guy will be trailing anchor and this guy will be top anchor. And here we get into some interesting stuff. So let's say now we wanted to give it a fixed height so everything below it gets pushed down. So I'm using a simple example here with height anchor just as a purpose to demonstrate what this actually does. We're gonna make this equal to a constant, let's say, I don't know, we'll make it perhaps 200. And instead of the another view instance here being um, aligned to top anchor, we're gonna say, go ahead and set your top anchor, your top constraints equal to the top guide's bottom anchor. And we're just going to comment out adding a bottom guide for just a quick second here and give this a run. And what you'll notice now is we have this empty space here and we can see the background container view, which was red. And we see the yellow view got pushed down. And this is basically what layout guides let you do. One of the important things that they let you do, and they let you do it without having to create these auxiliary views um, just to like move flexible space up and down. Now, I've used a trivial example here where we made the height anchor 200, but you can actually use uh, these layout guides like any other views that you're constraining. So you can make the constraint a multiplier. You can make it 50% of the container view. You can make it 
um, you know, one third the size, et cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead and add the bottom guide and let's constrain that as well. And we'll see how we can push this yellow view into the center by doing this. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this and just be careful when you copy and paste uh, constraints because it's easy to forget what you have and have it updated. So I'm gonna go ahead and update all of these just like that. And let's go ahead and update these. So we've got leading, trailing, top, and a height. So instead of top here, we're gonna say assign the bottom anchor equal to the bottom anchor. And the height is gonna be 200, but the other thing we now need to adjust is the bottom anchor of the another view should be the top anchor of the bottom guide. Go ahead and give that a run. Hopefully my math is right there. And we see the yellow thing is in the middle now, and we have all this flexible space. Uh, in the red view at the top and bottom. Now when we turn to landscape, the reason we don't actually even see the view is because we've hard-coded uh, the height of the bottom guide and top guide to be 200. And what happens is in landscape is we don't have uh, 400 plus any more space to accommodate that yellow view that's kind of in the center. So when you actually turn to landscape, you can kind of see it collapses. So let's uh, let's just do a little bit of an example here. Let's make this 100 and let's make this 100 and give it a run one more time. And we're going to see that it get, gets collapsed there and gets expanded. And of course, this will behave uh, appropriately on iPads or smaller devices, bigger devices, so on and so forth. So let's see, what are the takeaways? Layout guides, you should definitely be using them to create flexible space and push your views. They're similar to flexible space and toolbars or navigation bars. They're not that scary to use. In fact, they're pretty trivial actually. You create them like this. You can also create them in the global space of a class. That's exactly how uh, Apple has done their safe area layout guide. So if you ever type in safe area layout guide, you'll see that it is um, you know, global. You can get it in any of your functions here to all view instances. And you can use this to start creating modular layouts. Now that's something I wanna reserve for another video because this video is gonna get very long, but imagine a UI like the home screen where you have a bunch of icons. And so let's say you weren't using a collection view to do that and you wanted to have consistent spacing between all your home screen icons. Layout Guides gives you a lot of versatility, especially when they introduce widgets to do that. Now, I would bet that they're using collection views to do this, to render all this out, and I'm actually familiar with the fact that they are, but Layout Guides are definitely your best friend when it comes to doing things like this. So that is all I've got for today's video. Quick and brief intro, hopefully. Hopefully all that made sense. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. As always, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I think something like 50% of you guys that consistently watch are not subscribed, as YouTube loves to let me know. So please do hit that big red subscribe button. It really helps the channel out, keeps us going and growing together. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.